beaten throughout the afternoon. And uh, they are looting, they are running around uh, freely, in and out of the stores, taking what they want. And uh, Captain Ron has come online. Welcome aboard, Captain Ron. Uh, you've been over the scene. Uh, we've been watching this uh, throughout the afternoon. It's unabated. And uh, do you see any police presence? No, I don't, uh, Harold. And thanks a lot. It's great to be back. Uh, I just arrived on this scene. And when I arrived, I thought that we had a fire on the north end. And then I thought this was routine shopping traffic for Fedco with all the cars out here. And just a closer look, and I realized that people are running around and they're actually stealing out of the stores. Absolutely unbelievable to me as I watch this scene below me. Well, it is unbelievable. And uh, we heard the uh, mayor of Compton say that uh, his city is clamping down and they are going to put a stop to this. We understand uh, right now that the National Guard is being deployed in Southern California in conjunction with the CHP and the LAPD. And obviously their total effort will be to curtail this kind of thing. Christine, you said it early on this afternoon that this is feeding on itself now. You've got people coming down there, men, women, some of them even bringing their children in their cars. It's almost like they're on a shopping spree. It really is, Harold. It's just hard to imagine this is going on. And you mentioned the National Guard. I've been listening on some of the aircraft radios, and there are reports that the National Guard is now deploying just south of the Coliseum. And once we get done covering this, uh, we can head out that way and see if we can see some of the first deployment of that uh, National Guard. We watched this looting at this uh, shopping mall. I want to stress a couple of things that have happened. Two very sad things among all of the fires that are breaking out. And they're just breaking out like a virus all over the area affected. Uh, two key places have burned. Uh, Mark Ridley Thomas's own field office has burned right down to the ground. There's not a bit of it left. Mark Ridley Thomas's uh, city council field office in south central Los Angeles burned. Also, a city library branch has been burned down to the ground. There is nothing left of it, and uh, that is particularly sad, not only the loss of the books and what it means to the community, uh, it's also a historical landmark. It's gone. And uh, the people just walked in. The security guards gave up. The store said, that's it. Uh, we're getting out of here. And the people just walked in, some with shopping carts. They turned the sprinkler system on, we're told, so that the store could not be torched. They wanted to keep everything wet. Uh, at one point, we had a small problem, and uh, we won't necessarily show you that, but uh, one gentleman came up and tried to take the camera away from photographer Dave Bussey, and uh, we had to retreat out of the store at that point. Uh, there was uh, absolutely no fear of our being there, and just uh, maybe 25, 30 feet away, there were uh, a number of uh, uh, LAPD officers who were just watching. They were, they were helpless. Uh, the store was different. Some people walked out with a, sharp, a shopping cart full of uh, soap. Others took liquor, others took tape, uh, you name it, they had it. And the, 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 the parking lot was just full of cars. There were hundreds of people there. And nobody seemed to care much about it. They, uh, most of them were laughing and joking with us. And again, we uh, told you about this earlier, many of these folks brought their kids with them. And no one can quite understand what kind of a lesson that is meant to be for them. Folks were, were not at all reluctant to talk with us. Uh, many of them did, in fact, one woman who came out with a shopping cart full of groceries uh, was more than willing to talk to us, and uh, she unloaded it all. She told us that, uh, yeah, she didn't think she was stealing anything, that it was there to be taken, and somebody was going to take it, so it might as well be her. We're losing our picture now. Again, we're... Th the damage inside and out. Young people, people of all ages, teenagers, uh, you, you wondered about the people there in their 30s and 40s and 50s who were going in there uh, bringing out cartons of food and other foodstuffs and supplies. Joe, do you get the feeling, yeah, Harold, do you, do you get the feeling watching these people uh, up close that uh, they almost feel it's their right to, do, to, to participate in this kind of looting and lawlessness? That was the problem. We mentioned that last time, Harold. Uh, they think because of the Rodney King decision that they're uh, not getting a fair shake, and this is their way of showing the system that uh, they're going to get back. And here uh, we have the lady with the shopping cart. She talked to us about what she took and why. Cheese, some bologna, different things like that. Uh -huh. Things for my kids, my nine kids. Uh -huh. Well, the police are not doing nothing. If they wanted to stop us, they would have stopped us already. What, do you, what would you consider what you did? Did you say it was stealing? No. No, I don't consider it stealing because if it was wrong, they would have stopped it. Hurry. You know? All this, all this wouldn't have happened if they would have done us right. That's all I got to say. What's your name? Sharon Tillman. Sharon Tillman. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Daddy, help me with this stuff. Hey, please, get my phone. Oh
total lack of morality involved here, a total sense of right from wrong. For good looting, but yeah. I would certainly have to agree with him that that was the worst case of it uh, that I had seen. We were saying earlier that, uh, boy, if we could only see some sign of the National Guard, if only we could see some sign of enhanced police authorities' response uh, to there all of the is. mayhem and chaos that we've seen. And there it is, our final, our first look at it. And Captain Ron, you said it was there. You were showing it to us. Can you talk to us about it a little bit, Tuck? Now, one of those injured in that uh, building, and in some cases, then turned around and threw the bottles at cars that yeah. were passing by. And then they went, they crossed the street and, and uh, looted a gas station and a, and a sort of anti goggling across the street in an auto parts repair store, which they set on yeah. fire. Uh, it, it was an awful uh, 40 minutes or so watching that intersection. Uh, because that is where the most graphic, uh, aside from the fires, the horrible fires we've been watching all night, but the most graphic violence took place at that intersection because that's where people were dragged out of their cars. That one man uh, that we saw lying on the ground next to the, uh, the big 18-wheel uh, truck uh, was just dragged out, kicked, stomped, and in the case of the man with the, with the uh, semi-truck, um, somebody finally came over and relieved him of his wallet as he lay there. He is in very critical condition. We just rolled up here. We're at Western Avenue and 18th Street. Radio Shack burning behind us. That was what attracted our attention. And then we saw this. Came up, come and look over here. Across the street, the Viva Market there. Those people are not shoppers. They are looters. They are grabbing whatever they can grab. I saw a man walking down the street just a little bit ago with, with an armful of diapers. And the looting hasn't stopped. Okay, look. Over there, Gary. J.J. Newberry. Somebody just threw a, threw a, a smoke, a firebomb in there. It is now burning. J.J. Newberry burning here at the corner of uh, Western and 18th Street in South Central Los Angeles. Black smoke pouring out of that area now. Uh, two people running away. We don't know if they're the people who started the fire, but look at the smoke pouring out of that building. You can bet the flames will soon follow. This is an amazing scene here. You've got a fire behind me. You've got a fire that just started there. I mean, literally, since we've been on the air, just started there at J.J. Newberry, and people looting to the left here. I have a feeling that this Viva store, this grocery store, is probably going to go up fairly soon when they finish looting it. Uh, what have you seen so far? Like, all these polluters everywhere, everything. Were you were you inside Viva? What, what's going on in there? Nah, I haven't been inside there. Well, I have. You have? Yeah, everybody's taking all the food and everything. See a lot of people running. Have you taken anything? To be honest, um, yes. <laughs> what have you taken? Like a cigarettes and um, that's it. Why'd you, why did you? I mean, why? Why are you breaking the law like this? You know this is illegal. You know this is wrong. Why are you doing it? Well, since I seen everybody do it, that's why I just did it too. Uh, that's the only reason I got. But I'm mad too because of you know about the Ron Rodney King case. Go inside. Obviously, it was too hazardous to do that. But then we have the reports of others who say that someone did go in. Somebody drove up in a uh, Jeep or a Suzuki Samurai. They went in and they didn't come out. So we have those two conflicting reports here. But we, one thing there's no conflict about at all, that J.J. Newberry store is no more. No, it's gone. It's, uh, it's a total loss and uh, it's, it's burned up like crazy here. Flames just started shooting out. There was almost an explosion uh, here just a little bit ago. As I was approaching the officers, it's just a big explosion of flame kind of knocked me back a little bit, but uh, that's the situation here. More fire units rolling up on the scene. You can hear them uh, staging, now. staging at uh, 18th Street there in Western, and uh, they're sending another hook and ladder up to the area. Now Basically, the question is, do they keep it away from the Save-On drugstore and the grocery store that's on the other side of that? you got another three, four buildings in line there, don't you? Or you sure do. From my angle, from what I can see, this kid, Kids World store, which is right next to Newberry's, is going up too, from what I can see. Also, it looks like this, uh, this uh, shop for, it says Fashions for Women, what, Melody Shops, Fashions for Women? That looks like that's in real danger if it hasn't actually started burning. Well. This guy right here, see this, look, get this guy, see he's got the can in his hand? The, the sergeant, that was the man that the police uh, sent on, the, on his way a second ago. They say he's been attacking the fire trucks, throwing things at him. They said, they told him, if he keeps it up, he's going to jail. Now, you can see him taunting the officers right there. This is uh, emblematic of what's been happening right here. Uh, officers have told this man, according to Sergeant Garino, that if he uh, continues to interfere with the fire department, with the firefighters, that they're going to take him away. Oh, there you see, the people are back inside. They started looting again. Uh, the police officers at this point are protecting the firefighters who are working on this fire here at the Newberry store on uh, Western at 18th. And so what you have there 
People have gone back inside the store. They feel that they can do this now with impunity. There's a lady coming out right now out of the main entrance. Look at her. Her arms are full of uh, material there, full of stuff. People going in. The police see it. They know what's going on. But at this point, apparently, they feel they can do nothing about it. So there you, you see people. It looks, it, looks, it looks almost as though they're shopping, in a sense. You know, if, if, this, if you weren't sure that the store was obviously closed and if the doors weren't as, as destroyed as you see they are, it just looks like kind of like people are in there shopping. And I can imagine what the scene must be inside that store. Uh, it must be very, just absolutely crazy. But people are just bringing out whatever they can carry. Uh, look at them, all those diapers, lady, uh, lady with a bunch of diapers. I think it's interesting, I mean, from what you're seeing here, people are bringing out things. It doesn't look like it's stuff that they can sell. I don't know how many, how many diapers you can sell. I don't know if these are people who are necessarily profiting from this. I think they're just taking what it appears that they need. Obviously, it's theft. Obviously, it's wrong. Well, but, uh, you know, there's a certain necessity that seems to be driving uh, what people are doing here. Stocking up you, a bit. you alluded to it earlier, Mark. Uh, uh, they're reluctant to do it. They see everybody else doing it. And in their minds, they say, look, I need this stuff. I can't afford it. I'm going to do it. But if you ask them when they come out, like the guy with the cigarettes, they'll give you all the reasons why they shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You know, we may uh, actually move up there a little bit if we can stretch our cable that far and maybe ask some of these folks. Talk to them. Do an exit poll, if you will. All right. Well, wait a minute. Before... <laughs> as, uh, I'm sorry. The hour is That's late. That's all right. We need something this to laugh about. Serious situation. We the police are coming up right now. Look, look, there look. They there they come. They're coming up to the store again. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're watching these, uh, watching the news. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. Well, let's now, just, let's here just. Fast. Last fast. time they didn't arrest anybody, did they? They just no, sort of they shoot sure them didn't. away. No, they sure did Not that I saw. Not yeah. that I saw. Let's see what happens this time. We'll see. There's one. They're there's getting a... out. They've got their guns drawn. Guns drawn. They're chasing folks now. They're chasing people through the parking lot. They're chasing after this one guy who's got some diapers. Okay, let's see what happens. Look at that. They're going after that guy. Look at that. There he goes. Okay, well, he got away. He outran him. People are cheering on the looter. People are cheering for him. He got away from the police. They're cheering him on. He got away. Let's see what else we've got here. That officer uh, picked up a case of beer, a 12-pack of beer, and brought it back. The guy dropped the beer, but he got away. I don't see anybody yet who's under arrest as I look around. I don't know if you can see this, Paul and Ann. The officers have We're made watching. entry into the store again. They've got their hands on their weapons. One person has a shotgun in, uh, pointing into the air, one officer. Mark, we can see it vividly, and it looks to me like they're going in there and they're sort of half chasing, if you know what I'm saying. I think they're trying to clear it out. Yeah, I, you get that feeling. I, I think if they could have caught that guy, they would have, but they were content to let him go. They didn't want to chase him all the way down.